what is palm oil exactly and what why is, palm is it oil, Anna? Hold on. So what is palm oil exactly and why is it not considered vegan necessarily? Now you can ask me. <laughs> <laughs> Who got haircuts? It was we getting too long. Haircuts. A nair jingle. Good job. Because apparently it stuck in my head for 20 plus 20 years. years. Are you okay? Did, was that horrible? <laughs> okay, ba, ba, ba. Am I peeking? No. Yeah, you peeked. I just can't yell! I was right here. <laughs> Do you want me to lower your game? <clears throat> no, I just need a water. Sorry. Look, all I did was ask you to marry me. You're the one that said yes. <laughs> I don't think I'd take it back. That's a relief. I thought for a second I might have to live out my days alone. <laughs> Is that sarcastic? <laughs> Hi, I'm Anna. And I'm Brian. And we are Those, Those Annoying, Annoying Vegans. Vegans. And welcome to week three of our Chocolate, 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 Chocolate Trilogy. Trilogy. Guys, we have such an exciting recipe for you today. It is so delicious. Guess what it is? Well, you've already seen it in the description, but it's Nutella. Nutella, yeah. <laughs> now we know Nutella contains skim milk and whey and palm oil, so of course we're going to veganize, veganize it. it. And we also know you've seen a ton of Nutella recipes floating around the internet, but this one has a magic ingredient. That's right. If you recall, I am a bit of a coffee appreciator. <laughs> I imbibe a good amount of it and I like the taste. And we thought, why not put coffee in the Nutella? After all, Nutella is made from hazelnuts. And hazelnuts go great with coffee. coffee. And as always, this recipe is delicious, affordable, and easy to make. So let's make it. Let's make it. Now, one of the most important things about this recipe is you know what goes in it. I've actually not seen a homemade Nutella recipe that contains milk. People are figuring out how to make it without it. We used almond milk to sub out the skim milk that would normally be found in Nutella to give it sort of that creaminess, which I think worked. But you can make Nutella without milk at all. Yeah. We've seen it done. <laughs> you can do it too. You can also leave out the coffee, but why, why would you, would you, why would you do, do that, that to me? That hurts. This recipe is one of my favorite recipes we've made. Like when I tasted it, I was like, oh my gosh, this tastes like Nutella. And yep. that hint of coffee, mm -hmm. whoa. And I don't love coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker. I, I am. I, I think do. the t-shirts are funny, but I can't get them because <laughs> they're not true for me. But I actually like hints of coffee in my food sometimes. And it's easy to make it without the palm oil too. Obviously, you just use a little peanut oil. Of course, if you are allergic to peanuts, do not use the peanut oil. Uh, mm -hmm. You could use canola oil or some other form of non-palm oil oil. <laughs> uh, it's fine. You don't need it. Now you might be wondering, why is palm oil not vegan? It is derived from a fruit after all. That's true. Why is it not vegan, Anna? 85% of palm oil comes from Indonesia and Malaysia. That's 11% of their exports. Palm fruit thrives in tropical climates, so they are decimating these rainforests and along with them, two native species of orangutan populations. Not good. Not good. Not good for the orangutans. Our or... footprint. And if you're new to veganism, you might be saying like, are you kidding me? Palm oil? Now it's palm oil? 
What? You vegans are so annoying! Do what you can when you can. There are a lot of companies out there that use sustainable sources of palm oil, such as Earth Balance. The reason a lot of companies like to use palm oil is because it is a solid at room temperature. So anything that would require to be solid and not frozen or refrigerated, like the cream in an Oreo cookie, for example, contains palm oil. But coconut oil, also kind of solid at room temperature, there's other options. The most important thing is that Nutella is delicious and you don't need palm oil. We just showed you how to make it without it. And, and it's good. It's so good. It's really good. <laughs> We're really proud of this one. And there's also this little piece of news floating around. Palm oil might be linked to cancer. So maybe we can avoid it. Here's the thing, like you never hear broccoli linked to cancer, Brussels sprouts linked to cancer, <laughs> no. bananas linked to cancer. No. It's always the processed stuff. And you know, we, we do want to stay away from that as much as possible. It's funny because when people have an emotional reaction to veganism, you know you've affected them. People aren't really mad at veganism. They think what they're mad at is they're mad that they have now sort of been forced to look inward. You wouldn't get that upset about it if it didn't bother you. If people throw insults at you that are patently untrue, they don't phase you. You just sort of go on with your day. But there are those times where you kind of know something to be true. It, it pushes a little button inside of you, causes an emotional reaction. I don't think that people are really mad at us. I think that people are mad at the fact that they're being made aware of some of the horrific truths that are involved in the animal agricultural businesses. Dairy being a really, really high on the list. It's really bad for you, and it's uh, gathered in a really horrific way, and you don't need it. Yeah. It's unnecessary. Like Mike the Vegan says, like if you're lactose intolerant and you can't drink milk, or if you don't eat certain types of meats for religious reasons, it's okay, it's okay. But once you make the choice, it's all of a sudden not okay with a lot of people. Yes, you're pushing your beliefs on me. They don't look at it the other way. Yeah, if you think it's okay to steal a baby calf from its mom and take the mom's milk over and 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 over again until she dies, you're kind of pushing that belief on the animal. Also, veganism, it's it's not a belief system. It's like Gary Urofsky says, it's a moral imperative. It should be our responsibility to cause the least amount of harm possible mm -hmm. when we can. If you can avoid eating an animal product, just do it. Why I, mean, not? I don't know why. It's not hard. We like to think that we can show you on this channel that it is in fact not hard to eat vegan. And not only that, but the foods that you are used to eating as an omnivore can be made vegan. Exactly. We were at Have a Heart Ranch again and we made more pumpkin seeds. Vegan ramen in a cup, guys. If you haven't tried these, mm -hmm. dairy free. Oh my gosh. Vegan jerky, mm -hmm. primal strips, also on Amazon. And if you have Prime now, you can get it in two hours. That's the hickory flavor. I like the mesquite lime. Mm. Mm -hmm. We actually were having a little discussion on YouTube quite recently with a woman who said she was a dairy farmer in Canada. She was explaining how there's actually no such thing as a wild cow. We've domesticated these animals for the purpose of milk production and slaughter for beef. So you're not going to find bulls and cows roaming the American plains. <laughs> which is true. Which is true. Um, I would argue that the same can be said for small dogs that we've also domesticated. Over a period of thousands of years we have domesticated these animals. Some might view that as selfish. We've changed this animal for our purpose. We've, we've manipulated nature. But at the same time, we treat dogs really differently than we treat cows. Mm -hmm. So just because we have domesticated an animal for one purpose or another, doesn't mean we can't look at the situation now and go, okay, that was then. This is now. We let's rectify this. <laughs> let's really let's fix it. <laughs> We're bringing these animals into existence. They don't have a choice to be born. They're just born. All of us are. We mm -hmm. just show up. But we're bringing them to life to kill them and use them. Doesn't feel good in my heart. That's the entire premise of many an artificial intelligence sci-fi movie. Human beings have created this thing that is sentient that is intelligent, that, that, that is aware, it knows itself, it knows its surroundings, it wants to be alive, do we then have the right to kill it simply because we invented it? Cows are their own beings and they like being alive. Moms like being around their calves. Cows 
love being around their moms and their siblings and they love running around. They don't want to be in veal crates. And to her credit, on her farm she did say that the calves are kept in the same barn as their moms, but they are kept within view of their moms. They drink their mom's milk from a machine and the rest goes to human consumption. That was my understanding. Mm -hmm. Better than most factory farms, that's for sure, mm -hmm. where they just yank the calf immediately and then go kill it for veal. But at the same time, a baby being within view of its mother is different than being with its mother. I don't think that many human beings grow up within view of their parents. Yeah. <laughs> they grow up with their parents. If you're trying to choose the lesser of the two evils, that's the lesser of the two evils. But yeah. it could be that we just not use them at all. It's become so clear, especially since we started volunteering at the Have a Heart Ranch. And if you guys haven't checked out their website, please check out their website. This one right here. We're so excited. We're going there right now. You watch chickens, you watch turkeys, you watch horses, you watch pigs. They're fun. They like life. Yeah. They're not objects. They are animals. They're just like dogs. They're just like cats. Mm -hmm. They're just like rabbits. They have rabbits at the ranch. I like yeah. the rabbits. <laughs> Any of the domesticated animals that we accept, the ones that live with us in our home, whether it's a goldfish or a cat or a dog or a micro pig, they like being alive. And, and they love affection. And they're aware of their surroundings. Like I've heard people say like, they don't know what's going on. Like they just, they just mm -hmm. whatever. No, no, no. And they play with you. And sometimes I think they mess with you. Yeah. <laughs> that one pony bravery. Yeah, uh -huh. she kind of messes with you. Yeah, when you're mucking her stall, she's like trying to, she trying to, she tries to get your attention. Sir Gobbles has such a long snood. He breathes like an old man. He's like, <laughs> and he, it's so cute. He's such a love bug. Oh. Come here, are you, Rose? Oh. oh, look at how beautifully big she's gotten. You're almost a grown-up cat. Oh, guys, so if you're following us on Facebook, make sure to um, check the see first option mm -hmm. rather than the default option because apparently that's what you have to do to actually get seen on a news feed. Yep. Or pay to boost your post. <laughs> Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. Thank you. So guys, as always, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel and we will bring you a new video every week. Yay! New recipes and new talking. And more kittens. More kittens. More <laughs> st Are you super kitten? He's like, super kitten. <laughs> She's looking at She's you so She's staring <laughs> at me like, what are you doing? Bye. Bye. <laughs>